Okay, folks, I need you to turn off your cell phones and pagers and be quiet. This is a court of law. For everything WHBC, log on to whbc.com. All right, we're here today on the matter of the Johnson children. I'll find that the Johnson children to be neglected and dependent children. I see from the complaint that the children ages seven months, five and nine, were present during a domestic dispute between mother and her boyfriend. Recommendations for disposition, please. Your Honor, I would defer to FCCS and CASA. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Let's talk about the program, the CASA program, and why it's important to your court. Well, the CASA program is a court-appointed special advocate. There, it's a volunteer group that we have, and they represent the best interest of the child in a case when the child's been removed from the parents for dependency reasons, neglect. In Stark County, the program started back in 1982, and it was a collaboration between Family Court and the Junior League, actually, here in Stark County. And our program has continued since then. We actually expanded into Carroll County in 2014. Denise, talk to me a little bit about um, what you do on a daily basis with the CASA program. Well, my job is to recruit new volunteers. We have many children in the county that need CASA guardians, and we're very low on volunteers right now, so I'm trying to get many more good volunteers in here for their kids. And what we need is someone who will get into the child's life, will go and meet the child, build a bond with the child, talk to the foster parents, meet with the parents. Our job is solely related to the child, to look at the child and do what's in the child's best interest. Talk to me a little bit about um, how you became a volunteer. Okay, it was actually, this is my second go with it. Um, about 20 years ago, my baby went to kindergarten and I needed something to do and I loved kids. Tom, talk a little bit about why you chose to become a volunteer. Because I was a former school teacher. So describe a visit, a typical visit, with uh, a child that you're selected as a guardian for. Most of my visits are, are uh, pre-scheduled, so that, you know, the parents know, so their house isn't dirty, etc., etc. But I go in and I meet with all the kids. Uh, it could be one kid. I've had as many as five kids in one family. Uh, I meet with them on an individual basis as well as with the parents, or if the parents are, are present, if not, and there could be foster parents involved or relatives. They're all different. Right now I have everywhere from an infant to 18, so you really have to approach every kid different. I kind of take things slow. I don't push them. Um, just let them get to know me a little bit, and then the bond just forms. And how do you match them to a case? Just it, It's just random, or do you kind of think about what the case is about and maybe some of, part of that person's personality? Well, yeah, even better than that, we let them pick. So during the interview, we ask them, what age of children they'd like to work with, is there a particular area they would like. Um, beyond that, when we get a case, we then send it out and ask them, hey, would you like to work with an eight-year-old boy who has experienced this, or you know, whose parents are suffering from mental illness. But our job is solely related to the child, to look at the child and do what's in the child's best interest. And the guardian comes to the court hearings and lets the court know how, what's going on with the child, and it's our eyes and ears out there. I have also learned through investigation that the domestic violence incident was probably not a one-time occurrence. During my visits with the children, they began to open up with me. It's very difficult to get a child's trust. Uh, once you get their trust, they'll believe in you 100%. Uh, and believe me, when you see a kid smile, you know you've done your job. It's wonderful to make the bond with the kids that are going through a crisis. Um, you're sometimes the only person that is constant in their lives. If you had to tell someone who was listening or watching, um, you know, why they should do this, what would you say to them? I would say when you see that child smile and they run up to you and give you a big hug because you're the person they see the most and they can count on, it makes every hour you spend worth it. Well, there's nothing more important in this world than helping children, and that's exactly what these ladies do. And we want to say thank you for all you do. Hopefully we can get some people to come and volunteer. And we want to welcome you to our Share the Good Stark County segment. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Share the Good Stark County, brought to you by the Canton Regional Chamber of Commerce and News Talk 1480 WHBC.